Hi, I'm Patrick Palm, co-founder and CEO at uh, Favro, or Favor if you like. The future work happened faster than we thought because of COVID. Company after company are announcing that they're moving to a hybrid workplace. And this sets new challenges for you know, leadership and simply higher work. But a lot of these new practices that are important for kind of a work from anywhere environment were already things that many companies were looking into before uh, because they were moving towards business agility. But with work from anywhere, it becomes more crucial uh, to get these kind of things right. So you can think about it like this, that you know before uh, it was opportunity driven, companies wanted to be better at their business agility. And for that reason, they implemented practices around um, autonomous teams, uh, OKRs, et cetera. But now it's driven by necessity. And since it seems like we're not going back to the old normal, we're going into new normal, uh, this is now crucial for any business leader. So what are these practices that are critical for, for this kind of organization? Well, the first thing is, uh, how you structure your organization. Um, you want to organize yourself into autonomous teams. You can call them cells or pods. Uh, you know, doesn't really matter. Um, you know, McKinsey calls it one thing, Spotify another thing. Um, in an agile method like Scrum, you call it Scrum teams. You know, again, it's the same idea. You want to have cross-functional teams of seven plus minus two people roughly because that's a good decision-making group. If you're more people than that, it becomes more a discussion club. And if you're too few, you might not have all the competencies in the team that you need uh, to figure out how to solve you know, whatever problem you're trying to figure out. And then um, as you grow, when this becomes really a team of teams or you know, teams or squads or, or, or teams or pods or whatever you're gonna like, you know, whatever you're gonna call it, um, and I would say it's up to the number of roughly 150 or 200 people in total, because that's Dunbar's number. And what that means is it's the, it's the biggest amount of people that we as humans uh, feel like we can relate to. Sometimes it's called a tribe. So when things get bigger than, than this kind of 150, 200 people, uh, then you want to organize into uh, groups or sections, or maybe we should simply call it tribes, you know, like that. So this is the first thing, you know have these cross-functional autonomous teams. That is great for business agility, but now uh, with a hybrid organization uh, that also creates a, a good uh, group for, for autonomy. And autom autonomy is key if you want to work in a distributed fashion because you can't you know, breed down people's necks. I mean, you should never do that, but, but now it's, it's simply not working very well uh, from, from a management point of view. You know, you, you need to set it up so they can they can uh, operate in an autonomous way. Okay, so the second thing here is how you set goals. So you really want to manage objectives uh, rather than you know managing tasks, because again, the kind of micromanagement style of management it doesn't really work when you're not in the same office. Um, it's way more efficient to set objectives, you know, where these autonomous teams themselves decide how to deliver on these objectives. Um, at the World Economic Forum, I heard they were talking recently about um, tight, loose, tight. And what they meant by that is that you want to have very clear goals for what you're trying to achieve, you know, where you're going. But you want to be quite loose on execution, you know, allow the teams to, to find the best way themselves to how to execute this. And then again, you want to be tight on making sure that you actually follow up on these, these, these kind of goals. So that's, that's the goals part. Uh, this requires a new kind of leader, or maybe not a new kind of leader, but there's a certain kind of leader that you want to promote. So instead of you know, a command and control kind of fashion, instead uh, you want leaders that are good at facilitating uh, collaborative planning. So if planning before, which is one of the main things for, for any leader, was to break down into tasks and assign tasks and follow up on tasks, you know, very kind of command and control kind of style, you know, now it's much more important 
to have leaders that can facilitate uh, the process of planning as a group and who's committing to what, what you know, various tasks in, in that group. So it's almost like being a good moderator um, of a you know, panel discussion or, or something like that. Uh, that's the kind of leadership skills that, that you're looking for here. Sometimes this is called servant leadership and, and, and that is very true. The next thing here to think about is, is processes. Um, in, in many enterprises, what happens over time is that you, know, you, you kind of centralize processes, but that's a, that's a bad practice if you want to optimize for innovation and, and creativity. So already uh, before COVID, uh, companies that were trying to optimize for business agility, creativity, innovation, they were really trying to also have autonomy you know, with these teams around, around process. And that's become even more important now uh, in this, this kind of hybrid organization that will be successful today and in the future that we're moving into. The thing then to really think about is, is tools because you have something called organizational gravity. And what that basically means is that the there will be things in the organization uh, gravitating you back to what was in the past. So a good example of this is incentive systems. Let's say that you say, okay, we're gonna judge you by the, F by the performance of the team. But then if you have an incentive system, which is per person, uh, that will create an organizational gravity uh, pulling back from this thing you wanted to achieve. You know, you wanted to move beyond that and you have this thing pulling you back. But another uh, contributor to organizational gravity, which is very, very strong, uh, you know, that's tools. So often what happens in, in companies that are becoming big or maybe already big is that you need to have uh, tools, you know, IT systems that can live up to the demands of security and uh, it, um, governance around uh, data, especially important now with GDPR. Um, and of course that scales. So, so with those things, um, it's easy that instead of allowing the teams to pick whatever tool they want, you know, you're going with a, a traditional enterprise tool that can live up to those enterprise demands. And this is a big problem uh, in, in, in organizations that are fast growing uh, or that have reached a certain size, um, you know, which is why we created Favro. You know, I don't wanna to go too much pitch mode here now, but the whole idea with Favro was to make sure to create a tool that adapts to uh, each and every team, but at the same time can give you alignment, but alignment through uh, collaborative planning and transparency instead of alignment by centralization. So, you know, with Favreau or, or not, um, you really need to think around, you know, what, what kind of tools you're using there. Um, there are many tools where you can go collaborative instead of the old. It can be around design, you know, for example, Figma. Um, it can be around, you know, video editing, uh, like um, a script. Um, and of course, you know, of, using a Google Doc instead of, you know, ping pong uh, attached files, you know, with email. And of course, not using email, using something like Slack. So you get that asynchronous uh, communication instead. So, you know, having a strategy around these things, um, the structure of the organization, the leadership, managing objectives rather than tasks, making sure that you have tooling that support a decentralized approach to processes. You know, all of those things are, are important. Now, finally, you know, you might say, well, what about automation? Everything's about automation now, you know, using AI, you know, we can get rid of half of the workforce. Well, I don't know exactly uh, where the road of automation will bring us when it comes to AI, but a lot of automation you can do already today. And you need to make a choice there as well. If automation is something that happens centrally, or would you like to put central automation into the hands uh, of your autonomous teams? in Favro. Um, so make sure that the teams can themselves automate the, the kind of work uh, that is possible to automate and, and not make that a central, centralized you know, question. These were some of my thoughts around what the future work, hybrid organizations, remote first, work from anywhere, uh, what all of that means. See you later.